Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at how we can blend photos. We're going to take two skyline photos and blend them and I'm also going to show you how you can cut out a car and stick it somewhere where it's not. Stick with us. So the first thing I need to do is import my two images. We start with a skyline so I'm going to come up to file down to import select the image that I want press OK and we've got one skyline photo and then I'm going to import the other one so file import and we're going for this one click OK I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can realign ourselves and drag everything over so I'm sitting on top of the grey so we've got a, a plain background to work on so I want to add this photo and I want to put it over this end so I just need to scale it to get it a a similar size. So we could turn snapping on just to make it a little bit easier and we can drag it down. Snap that one and then we'll hold down control to constrain the proportions and just snap that down as well. So we'll move it back to the corner there. So now I've got my images in the right locations we need to create a mask. So to create my mask all I'm going to use is the ellipse. So if we come up grab our ellipse tool and then we can drag out an ellipse can't see it very well at the moment so what I do is I think I hold down shift and give it a red outline and um, we come up to the fill and stroke dialog box button at the top here click on that to open up our fill and stroke dialog box and my opacity is right down so we turn opacity up I'm just going to click on the X down in the bottom left hand corner to get rid of the fill color so now we've got a nice simple outline so we can see what we're doing so we come up grab the selection tool we can adjust our image till it's in the right place for what we want I'm going to stretch that a little bit, that's down a little bit. So I think round about there. So I'm quite happy with that position. But what we need to do now to create this mask is to turn this white. So we come down, click on the white fill colour. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click on the X down here to get rid of the stroke colour. It needs to be white for this to work. So with our ellipse white and set in the right location, we now need to add a bit of blurring to get a smooth transition between the photos. So when we add our blur, as we drag our blur up, the bounding box is the limit of the blurred shape so we don't really want to go any further than the edge of our photo if we go any further than the edge of the photo we might start seeing this harsh line where the photo ends so if we take our bounding box just to the outside of the photo we should be good so now we've got our blurred mask if we hold down shift we can select our photo behind we can come up to the top we can go to object down to mask and over to set mask and that would give us this nice smooth transition if we click off to get rid of the bounding box so we can also move our masked image so I'm going to move this over slightly so it's a little bit nearer to these buildings on on the left hand side so I'm going to hold down control to constrain the movement so we move horizontal or vertical from our original position I'm just going to drag it into a position that I like I think somewhere around there so I quite like it there. We've obviously got this strip down the right hand side where I've uncovered the um, photo beneath. We could if we wanted to create a mask and just mask that out. So we can drag this over towards the edge of the photo. Hold down shift. Hold on, let's get our selection tool. Hold down shift, select the image at the back and we can come up to object, clip, set clip and that'll clip our back image. So now when we click off we don't have any overlapping image from the background. So that's our blended skylines. Let's have a look at how we can insert a car into an image now. So starting with a clean document, I just need to import my two images that I'm going to be using. So first thing I want to do is zoom out. So with the current page settings, we can see the page over the top of our images. So we could turn that off, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to select the two images and I'm just going to drag them off to the side so we're away from our page. So the first thing I need to do is cut out the car. To do this, I'm just going to draw around it with a Bezier tool. I have made a tutorial uh, running you through how you can make paths using the Bezier tool and how you can adjust them and perfect them using the nodes tool. If you click on the link in the top right hand corner, you can go and watch that and it gives you everything you need to know to better do what I'm about to do. So first thing, come up, grab the Bezier tool. And then we're going to zoom in and we are just going to follow the outline of the car. So I'm just going to speed through this and get back to you when I've finished the outline. So I've 
done my basic outline so I'm just going to give it a nice bright red hold down shift give it a nice bright red um, outline I'm going to click on the X just to get rid of the fill color I'm going to come down to the bottom here and I'm going to reduce the size of our stroke and I'm going to zoom in I'm just going to go around with the nodes tool now and correct all these mistakes that we've got in different places so we grab our nodes tool again once I've done this I'll get back to you So now I've gone round and I've adjusted my path so it fits a lot better around our Ferrari. Um, over on the wing mirror here there is a little hole that we can see through so we do need to remove that as well. So I'm just going to zoom in on that. We grab our Bezier tool and we can just quickly make our path. Come in with the nodes tool if you just need to do any fine adjustments. I think that would do for our purposes. So with our smaller path created, we need to subtract that away from our large path. So if we select our large path with the small path on top, we can hold down shift, select that as well, and we can come up to path and down to difference. And that will remove that section of path from our bigger path. So now if we give our, our path a fill color, we should see that we've got a hole in the center of it. So we select there and we've got a hole in the wing mirror now. So that's our clipping path created. So all we need to do now is clip the image. So with our path selected, we can hold down shift, select the image. We can come up to object and down to clip and over to set clip. And that should have neatly cut out our car. We zoom back out. So at the moment, our car is a little bit oversized. So I'm just going to use the scaling handles. I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions. And I'm just going to shrink down our car so it fits our image a little bit better. So we're going to put it over here somewhere. Still a bit big, I think. Perhaps we make it very fractionally smaller. So I think I'm pretty happy with the location of our car in the image now. The scale's roughly right. So if we look at our Ferrari, it doesn't really blend in with the background. One, there's no shadows or anything around the car. Also, the colour of the car doesn't reflect the colour of the background. So we can adjust our car to fit a little bit better with the surroundings. So one thing I'd like to do is just give it a subtle hint of red on, on the, the paler areas. So I'm gonna drag our car off to the bottom just so we can go through the next steps and see what's happening clearly. Um, you can work on your car where it is on the road. Um, the first thing I wanna do is create a path that covers our car. Now we've already created the path once, so all I'm gonna do is click on our car. I'm gonna press down on Control and D to duplicate it. So now we've got a copy of our clipped path. So I want to separate the picture and the path out again. So I'm going to come up to object, come down to clip, and then I'm going to come down to release clip. And that will separate out our clipping path and the image behind. So if we click off now, we can just click on that back image and we can press delete and remove it. So now we've got a path that covers our car and we've got our car underneath. I'll just press Control Z to pop that back over the top. I want to make this path blend with the background mountains. So I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna grab the color picker tool over on the left hand side, and I'm gonna come up to the mountains at the top here and pick a lightish color, something like that. Uh, we can reduce the opacity a bit on that. But what I want to do is I want to come up to the blend mode. And in here, I'm gonna change the blend mode. So what have we got? Let's try darken. So what change in the blend mode has done, it's it's actually just areas that are light, it's darkened with our path colour. So now it looks like these paler areas are reflecting a little bit of the background colour of the surroundings. So our car should blend a little bit better with the mountains. So if we select both of these, so we're selecting our car and we're selecting the path with the reddish tint, we can come up, we can group them both together. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to soften the edge of our car. So if we zoom in a touch, so now we've got our reddish path and our car combined into one group, we can feather that group. So what feathering does is just slightly blur the edge of the image. So if we come in to filters, we can come down to blurs and down to feather. So we can inc increase this and decrease it to add more blur Oh, hold on, we need live preview turned on so we can see what we're doing. So as you can see, we've gone way too far now. Our car's starting to disappear around the edges. So if we bring that back down, 
we just want it very subtle. So I think that'll probably do us actually. We press apply there. So we've got this subtle softening of the edge. We zoom out, we can get rid of that. So we can put our car back where we wanted it, somewhere up here. Now it clearly doesn't fit into the photo. There's no shadows, there's nothing to blend the two together. So if we give our car a shadow, all I'm gonna do for making a shadow is I'm just gonna draw out a shape that will roughly suit, we we'll zoom in a touch so we can see what we're doing, which will suit the shape of the car. So I'm going to start there, just going to come down. So I think that'll do us for our shadow. So we're going to turn this black. We've got the opacity reduced already. I'm going to reduce it even more. I'm going to add a bit of blur so it just blends a little bit better. In fact, I've added quite a lot of blur. Let's take some of that off. I'm going to drop it down below the car. So if we come up get our selection tool, we just need to lower it a layer so it's sitting beneath the car. So we're still not very dark on this side. So what I do is compress Control D. I'm going to select my nodes tool. I'm just going to drag in the nodes on this side because I don't want them all the way over there anymore. I just want to darken up close to the vehicle. Let's move that one in a bit. So we reduce the blur. Let's go back to our selection tool. We increase the opacity. We drop that down below the car. So I'm just going to move this shadow to the left a bit so we get a little bit of shadow more under these wheels down here. So if we just grab our darkened shadow and move it this way a little bit, we just get a little bit more shadow underneath these wheels. So I'm quite happy with the shadow now. But one thing I have noticed is our rear tyre down here seems very pink. I'm not sure if it's to do with our, our tinted layer. So what we can do just to check is if we come up and open up our Layers and Objects dialog box, we can open up our layers. So in here we've got our two shadows, we've got our background image, and we've got our group, which is our car, so which is made up of the path, which is the tinted color, and the original image. So if we go into the path, if we just hide this, we can see what it's actually doing. So if we toggle that on and off, it doesn't make any difference to the pink tire at the back. So it's clearly not that. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it, Control D. I'm going to make it black. So that's got rid of the red color down here. But if we could go to, should we try darken again? What's multiply do? No. Nope. So you can just go through these and see what works best. Actually, I'm quite happy with that overlay. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to add a gradient to this so we can hide a lot of it. So if we come up to the top here, we can get our linear gradient and we need to come over to the gradients tool on the left hand side. I'm going to take the fully opaque end, I'm going to take that down to cover up our tire down here. And the other end I'm just going to move round. And that seems to have got rid of a lot of the red off that back tire. So if we just zoom out, how's our image looking? I think that's looking fairly good. I'm not too sure about the opacity of that. I might reduce that slightly of the darkest section of the shadow. I'm going to select the shadow again. I'm going to press Control D. And I'm going to hold down Control to constrain proportions. I'm going to shrink it a little bit. I'm just going to move it in to darken underneath the car. We can then drop it down so it sits behind the car layer. So I think I'm happy with that for this tutorial. Hopefully you found that helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.